Africa Prime, brought to you by Jamison Select Reserve. Welcome back to Africa Prime, the show that brings you insight into pertinent issues on the African continent. Still with me in studio is Floyd Mbele. He is CEO of Orlando Pirates. And from our bureau in Lagos in Nigeria, Colin Udo, editor at kickoffnigeria.com. Floyd, let me begin with you. And it might sound like a funny question to be asking you, but is football a business? Uh, it certainly has developed into a business. Um, I think from the beginning, yes, it may have been a pastime uh, social activity uh, but with the investment that uh, companies have made uh, into 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 the running of football and clubs particularly it has turned into a business yeah I'm going to pose the question to uh, Colin about just what football is worth but before we go there I want him to think about it while I ask you the same question the, the first question here on uh, just football as a business when we look at the way it is administered what one must ask the question do we see football like People look at the mining industry, state in incentives, infrastructure that's put into place, and those kind of things. On, oh no, certainly. From a point of view where you are running a club, you have to operate it as a business uh, in the sense that you've got to make sure that you do project what the successes are. Just like you project what profits are in a team, um, you do actually. And the value that you attach is the level of success that you are able to achieve at a club. And certainly the clubs that are successful on the field, that would be able to translate into a lot more uh, financial gain uh, in the long term. Yeah. Colin, I pose the question to, to, to Floyd here about uh, football as an industry. Is African football seen as an industry by governments and also by the football clubs themselves and maybe most importantly by the continental body, CAF? Well, um the operative word there being see as opposed to actually run. Now, yes, they do see football as a business, but the question is, do they run it as a business? That's the key difference in, 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 in this. Now, uh, in places like South Africa and possibly North Africa, yes, it is both seen and run as, um, or you might say, successful businesses. But, you know, elsewhere, no, uh, East South Africa, uh, West Africa, maybe Central Africa, not so much. Now, um, again, you've got to look at the continental administration and think that's where the problem actually starts from. Because you look at Europe, for instance, and you know, playing in the, in the European competition, um, the Champions League, for instance, is worth upwards of maybe 50 to 60 uh, million dollars for, for the winners. Now, you look at <coughs> African competition, you play in the continent, in the CAF Champions League, and the winner gets to take, what, $1 million? That is way less than, I'm sure, what uh, Floyd Mbele's club spent on running their, their, their club on maybe a monthly or even um, uh, on, a, on a season basis, way, way less. So wh when, when you look at that, because you've got to generate income from um, certain places, you've got to generate income from attendances, you've got to generate income from um, sponsorship and partnerships, mm. you've got to generate in income from merchandising, and unfortunately, not too many clubs in Africa have the, um, the business acumen or the ability or even the will to do these things. Let me and ask you a difficult uh, question. Sure. Let me ask you a difficult question. How much is football worth in Africa? And I'm talking about the 54 nations of Africa. Well, <laughs> first of all, you've got to ask whether, is, are, you, are you talking about real worth or <laughs> maybe projected worth? Because in terms of what is worth on a real, uh, really, you've got to only look at possibly North and Southern Africa. And unfortunately, I can't put a figure to that. In terms of what it might be worth, I think we're looking at a multi-billion dollar business. Unfortunately, that, that has not been tapped to its full potential. Yeah. And again, I would say that's tragic. Yeah, but uh, Floyd, isn't that the problem? The fact that we don't even know what we are worth. Therefore, it becomes difficult to then plan and say, we want to be worth X in X number of years. Well, uh, I think it's true, but I think you have to also understand that particularly in some of the underdeveloped countries uh, and where the clubs are not run as businesses, yeah. it's difficult to be able to quantify uh, the value of what the real worth is, uh, save and except for t uh, countries where you'd find that some of the talent that they get there, they, they export it to, 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 to Europe. Uh, but even then, that's only a limited figure in terms of what it is that they can get. Do so we know what we're worth in South Africa? Uh, we can only be able to quantify that in terms of what the league is able to, to put up. And certainly we're in the, in the, in the multi-million multi uh, business industry, certainly in this country, yes. Yeah. Now, uh, Colin raised an important issue earlier on about football administration and the fact that it has to start right at the top, at the CAF level. 
Now, when we look at what our championships are worth versus what they are worth in Europe, whether versus what they are worth in uh, Latin America, we find our championships have very, very little value. Why is that? Well, you can only quantify the value in terms of what it is that you're able to export. If we are told we're a big market in terms of exporting players yeah. into Europe, which is mainstream, then that value would certainly increase. But having said that, we also have to look at the number of companies that are able to take the responsibility of getting involved. And obviously, uh, we, we are a country that depends on other countries in terms of investment as yeah. well. Yeah. So you do find that if there are challenges elsewhere in the world, it affects us negatively. Now, we're finding that companies such as Walmart are coming into South Africa. There are companies from all over India that are coming into Africa for the continent's billion-plus people. On the football scale, what is preventing outside people or outside companies in investing in football in Africa? Well, I think for them is whether we are able to afford them a return on investment. Why are we unable to do that? Uh, I'm not saying we're not. I'm just saying from, from where they are sitting in the projections, they must deal with perceptions. One, it's a perception whether the game is run properly. Yeah. It's a perception whether they can get quantifiable uh, value that they feel that they are getting an investment and whether they are getting that return on that investment. Yeah. And if there's a doubt, the marketing spend gets cut and football that depends on that marketing spend uh, suffers. Yeah. Now, of course, Sir Floyd, you sit there in, in a very nice position because you have just had one of the best seasons <coughs> in Orlando Pirates history, uh, <coughs> winning uh, the, the, the three cups that you guys did win last year. But one of the issues around football is administration. Is the game being run properly? Let me put you on the spot in South Africa. No, in South Africa, definitely. It is. Uh, I have no doubt about that. You're happy that. about that? I'm extremely happy. Okay, let me take that question to the north. Uh, Colin, in Africa, is the game being run properly? Let's begin with CAF and then bring it down into the associations and the football clubs. Well, I've, I said that earlier on when I, made, when, when I spoke last time, it's not being run properly at all. And um, it's had a, a knockdown effect on um, the, the national associations and the clubs. Yeah. You, you look at um, clubs and um, football in sub-Saharan Africa, and to be honest, you know, it's a total shambles the way it's being run. Um, unfortunately, it's not being run, like Floyd said, in the way that would encourage um, uh, potential uh, corporate organizations to come in and look and say, look, hey, we can quantify exactly uh, you know, what returns we're going to get on these yeah. investments. But and, Colin, you know, Colin, Colin, yes. if, it's being, if it's a shambles, as you put it, how come we've had the same president for CAF for the past I don't know how many years without change? But that's exactly the problem. That's exactly the problem. You know, I if you have a dynamic system where, you know, every, set I mean, that, that, that's exactly what democracy is about, mm. you know, about change every um, over a set period, whether it's four years, whether it's eight years. But when you have um, a situation where we have at CAF, where you have one man who's been sitting on the same seat for, uh, I mean, more longer than any of us can remember, then he, he, there's a bit of stagnancy that comes in. You know, you don't move forward, you don't move um, ahead and you know things just seem to carry on as is but what, what we need right now at that level at calf level is yeah. an injection of fresh ideas an injection of fresh blood who can actually you know look at this uh, at football and think hey look I think we've been going in one direction for too long yeah. let's expand our horizons let's see how to make football you know uh, improve uh, over the entire continent and not just in fits and starts and probably we stumble into one good thing or the other. Yeah. You know, we, that's why we need that change right there. And that's why I say it's a shambles. From where you sit, who is to blame? Well, um, I, I think you, we've got to look at all of us in the football business and think, okay, what are we doing actually? Is and it the associations calling? Yes, look, the associations, unfortunately, almost suffer from the same kind of problem at, uh, at the top. It is is way too politicized rather than, um, you know, business-minded. You know, when, you, when people are, are too politicized, they think only about maintaining the status quo and not, you know, moving forward and thinking um, long-term. And unfortunately, the governments are to blame because they don't oversee properly. And because they, 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 they have their fingers way too much into the football, they, they don't refuse to let go. And the associations also, because they are too politicized, are too keen on protecting their own positions rather than looking at how to move the game forward. Yeah. Now, Floyd, you are a player in the football industry because you, are, you run a football club that's as successful as that. But you are also a voice within SAFA. SAFA, which has within it the power to change things uh, at the CAF level. Are you exercising that power? 
Uh, to the extent that you can in terms of the league, uh, yeah. because we are a special member. Um, but I think, um, just to, to get the discussion, I think it depends from country to country. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do find that in most of the countries that the government gets involved. And with that, depending on what is it that they project or see as an issue, um, as, as my colleague is raising it, that some of the stumbling blocks are exactly that, that it becomes politicized. But the politics that are involved, obviously, are the decisions that people must take for or against. Mm -hmm. And at mm -hmm. times, they inhibit their, their hindrance yeah. to the development of football. I think the benefit for us is that we do not have uh, government intervention uh, and that the clubs, and I think for me the key thing is exactly that what the role of the clubs are, uh, not only in professional football, but even in amateur football, yeah. and how that influences uh, SAFA, yeah. and how that influences CAF. Yeah. Now, in order to develop football, of course, we must begin right at the grassroots. When you go to European countries, you see football fields almost all over the place. Whereas when you come to Africa, we glorify in the pictures that show kids are barefoot, uh, running on a dusty field, kicking a ball made out of paper and that kind of thing. From your where you sit, how difficult is it to build that skill from the bottom right up to the top? Yeah. That skill needs a sustained investment. Would you have a price for us of how much it costs? You, you couldn't do that because you must be able to look at a population of 43 million in South Africa and to be able to make an assessment in terms of how many of those are active football players and to be able to make sure that you develop those infrastructures. Yes, uh, some of the larger countries in Africa have got huge uh, uh, populations and therefore you not, may, may not be able to, to get a round figure on it. The benefit for some of the European countries is that they don't have as many in terms of the population population and perhaps it makes it a bit more manageable sure. and realistic even in terms of the, 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 the spacing of the country whereas you have a large country like Nigeria uh, like Algeria, like South Africa, where you know some of those places are not developed, you will find that if you compare it to to an England or to a yeah. France, that is not as big. It may be beneficial for them in the long term. Sure, Colin. Final word from you. What's the solution? What's the way forward? You have twenty seconds. Well, um, I think there, there's got to be a commitment to change, uh, a commitment to develop football from the grassroots, a commitment to ensure that you know we, we, we turn the game around. <coughs> Unfo um, if and when we do that, you, you find the most successful clubs in Africa are, are the ones who are run privately. So if the governments in, in, in Sub-Saharan Africa can decide to hands up football, allow, regulate it, allow uh, it to be run by private hands, then maybe, maybe we can change, especially if we make some changes at the continental level, at the top of the continental tree. Floyd, I'm hearing an echo of what you're saying here. Keep government out of football. Uh, no, certainly. To the extent that it leaves the football in, uh, administrators to be the ones that are ahead in the pyramid skin, most certainly.